thinking about um, uh, the power of brands and um, why is it that some brands uh, will last a long time, forever, in, in a sense, and some, and, and some will come and move away quite quickly and they come into the consciousness of people and then they, they, people become tired of them. If a brand has a reason to live, if it has some authenticity, some root somewhere, uh, and it can relay that emotional message and can continue with that contact uh, relationship with its customers, then that brand uh, will last for a very long time. Well, people are now looking for authenticity, they want to differentiate themselves, uh, maybe in terms of whether they're eating something or driving something or wearing something, they want, we, they want that item to actually have a very strong root and to mean something. The Fred Perry brand stands for something, which is a combination of its tennis roots, how it moved from being a sport brand into a street brand, its um, total uh, involvement with and connection with British street culture, British music culture, and the emotion of that, so we talk about that first, and if you get that, and you understand that, and you understand how permanent that is, and how forever cool that is, then you'll want to buy a polo shirt from us. Um, so we're at the birthplace here. So you know, this is the this is the start point. This is the Fred Perry shirt. It's uh, made in England. So here it is, and, and one of the. Um, Separations, I guess, from the, the Fred Perry shirt, apart from the fact that it's made in England, is that it, it became famous because of these, what we call these little tipping colours here on the, on the collar, and they had, a, in a sense, a start point that was, in those days, to do with football teams. So each of the football teams had their own colours, uh, and, uh, and then the Fred Perry shirt started to move from a plain shirt into a tip shirt because of those, of those colours of the team. So the one I'm holding here happens to be um, a West Ham United colour combination, but there are others that are, that, are, that follow follow colour combinations traditionally that are related to the to the, to the football team that, that supporters support it. Uh, so made in England shirt, uh, the birthplace of that, and we and we play with that in terms of uh, not touching the um, essence of the shirt. But over here, for example, there's a variation of that where we're using uh, Japanese fabric made in Japan. It follows the same thought process in terms of um, the PK and the construction of the PK and what it looks like. As again, as we've said before, everything has a pretty sharp, clean look to it. So we, we, we play with the shirt in terms of either it's very classic color combination or it's classic shapes. Uh, and then we may collaborate with some people that are, again, reflecting our subcultural um, Relevance. So we've done some work um, recently with uh, Jamie Reed. Jamie Reed is very famous for uh, creating the album covers for the Sex Pistols in the um, late 60s. And uh, Jamie's done some work with us now in terms of personalizing shirts. So this is kind of a very kind of Jamie Reed attitude towards um, typeface and, and, and graphics. Uh, so uh, as, you, as, we've, as we've taught before, the key shape of the shirt is really important, how that looks. But after that, we will collaborate with people where it has a relevance to our particular subculture and where we sit within that. So we were talking about how, how important Made in England is, um, it's the root of the root of the brand. So also where possible, we'll, we'll do a lot of work with other British brands that are, that are made in England. Um, so, and as long as they have, again, some relevance to us. So we've been working with a, um, a brand uh, up in the north of England called Caradice that traditionally made uh, cycle bags. But we've literally taken the, if you like, the thought of the cycle bag and then we've reinterpreted it into, uh, into a pretty contemporary looking tote bag. And we'll, and we'll adapt that with our tartan lining to it. Uh, um, but the importance is that it's, it's, it's made in England, it's contemporary, it's got some relevance um, uh, to our subculture. A really great example of that is the George Cox um, boot. I mean, George Cox has been making shoes in England now for over 100 years in, in, in Northampton. Um, he was the 
originator of the famous brothel, keeper, uh, brothel creeper and the suede boot. Uh, and this is a George Cox monkey boot, which has been like that probably for the last 30 or, or 40 years. Made in England, quite relevant to, if you like, our subcultural um, uh, linkage. Uh, and then I can move, move around here in terms of, we have belts that are made in, made in England. Um, we have other shirts that are made in England. We will do some specific uh, wallets using uh, leather fabrication made in England. So the Made in England link in terms of manufacturing in this area of uh, our segment, the Laurel Wreath Collection, uh, is really important. Okay, so, the, so we, we were talking earlier about um, how collaborations work and the kind of fairly um, broad customer base uh, that we have. And it is, it is broad, but, but at the same time, a lot of it comes back to some kind of key style details of what the brand's always represented. So it's always been a very sharp, quite clean, elegant uh, look. We talked before about how to wear Fred Perry shirt, it's very important to wear it with the buttons done up, certain uh, color trimmings and uh, style trimmings like that always have to be very clean and very, and very neat. And a, a good example of that is the way that we've been working with the um, Bradley Wiggins uh, collection. So you have some pieces here that um, are very Fred Perry because the, uh, the neck is done up, it's, it's, it's worn in that way. The tipping colors are coming through from uh, how, how, how Bradley sees his um, uh, cycle life. Uh, and, uh, and, sh and sure enough, you come to a piece like this, which is, which is very Fred Perry in terms, again, a very clean look. Uh, the coloration is, is very sharp. Styling is very sharp, it's very modern. Um, so it has a broad base, but it has a broad customer base within a certain look. And that look for us has always been very clean, and very sharp, and very elegant. So if you're, if you're the CEO of, of, a, of a business like Fred Perry, so therefore do you have to be like a really good tennis player? Um, or do you have to be, um, um, or do you have to be a mod or a certain type of uh, um, style is, is important to be able to, to run that? And it, it, of course the answer is no, because CEOs are judged on, on, other, on other matters, but, but I guess it helps occasionally. So I was probably one of the first guys who actually put on a pair of Levi's and sat in the bath and they shrunk to me. I mean, before we had pre-shrunk denim. And so, you know, my exposure to fashion and music um, uh, in my late in my late teens was 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 heavily influenced by um, American fashion and how that was interpreted by British guys. So my so my music was um, a combination of uh, of modern jazz and soul and blues. Uh, so a lot of my early star, style icons would have been uh, either, either people like the late great Sam, Sam Cooke, who was a wonderful soul blues singer from the States, um, uh, or, or even someone like um, modern, ja modern jazz quartet. So I would go to, go to clubs that were playing that kind of music, so it was the days of kind of modern jazz, blues, soul. Uh, uh, small faces in terms of how they interpreted that. Small faces were a huge um, British band that you like represented mods at that at that time. So my own personal influences came from that. Does that help me in a, in a in an environment like Fred Perry? Yes, it means that I'm in a sense more reluctant to move away from that um, very tight approach, very detailed approach to style than perhaps others may, may be. So we've always tried to remain faithful, if you like, to how, uh, how Fred Perry is perceived by its fan base. And that, that fan may be 60 years old or 20 years old or 15 years old. And, that, and that, not to betray that thought, not to betray that fan base is really important for us. So we don't, we don't treat ourselves as a kind of typical lifestyle brand. You won't see us, you won't see perfume by Fred Perry in um, boutiques in the airport. You won't see us um, making sunglasses or those other things that other brands may do to get brand extension. So we worry about, um, we worry about betraying the faith that we have with our fans. It's a fan-based brand and that's really important to us.